Oh my uh-huh. gosh, we are here. We are live. This is an exciting, exciting time for everybody. All right, I am Riot Zero Nena, aka Julian or Jules JP on Twitter. Um, yeah, we are so excited to bring back the balance patch updates. And I will go ahead and kick it off. Um, We have two designers who actually worked on the balance update who are going to give us some behind the scenes updates on why we made the decisions and maybe kind of peel away the curtains of the the process behind updating your favorite cards. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Plink, a.k.a. Dave Smith. Go ahead, take it away. It's true. Give us one second. Wait, Plink, hold on. Wait. Hold on, Plink. Oh, no. Can he not hear us? No, I'm pretty sure. Hey, chat. Everyone says muted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, chat? Yeah, can you hear us? We need to cook, chat. Come on. Help us out. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, give me one second, Plink. Let's go ahead and do Brian's intro. Here we go. Oh, boy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Brian Koplik. Uh, I've been a designer on Lore for about two years now. Oh, Oh, no. no. Spoilers. Uh, You (laughs) fully deleted my site. That's okay. I know who I am. Um, yeah, I studied uh, game design at UC Santa Cruz, uh, started in the industry as an engineer. I'm not a very competitive player. I, I play a lot of Path and, and Commander, but um, you know, I'll, I'll take some LP sometime. And uh, yeah, I like making memes on Twitter. Uh, I love janky combos, puzzle games, and um, I love you all. You, se- seriously, you are one of the best um, game communities out there. So keep being yourself. Do I need to vamp? I'll keep vamping. Yeah, Brian, keep it keep it going. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. So I, I helped develop a little bit of Alawi, a little more of Kale, and then I'm actually the lead for the next two expansions. So you're going to see a lot of me uh, coming up soon. And I'm so, so excited to show you all the stuff I've been working on. Seriously, it's been a long, a long development path, so uh, I cannot wait to get that out to you. I've now lost audio from you. No, it's it's okay. They okay. they can still it's hear you. Good. Now, Plink, go ahead. Let me let me see. Let me see what you're cooking. Can you try to say something for us? Uh, give me one moment. <laughs> I I'll translate for you. Plink says he can stare and make funny faces. I do love chat just being like, let him cook. <laughs> okay, okay. I, they should be able to hear you now. Do you want to go ahead and take it away, Plink? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much of this y'all need to know besides what you know what's printed on the page. So, uh, yeah, the, the main things I've worked on is uh, for champs are Jay Sachan, Gwen, Kane, and Varys. I've also uh, put some time in with Brian on some of the stuff that he's coming out with, so that's going to be exciting. We've got some stuff coming in the future. So, um, I think that's good enough. We can probably get rolling on the path. Yes, let's do it. And thank you everyone for for bearing with us. Um, I do want to give a shout out. This is a super cool streaming room at Riot HQ. Um, It is my first time in the streaming room. So we're still uh, (laughs) mine too. ironing out the kinks. Yeah. Uh, Thanks guys for bearing with us. (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, Flink, do you want to talk about uh, the the patch goals that we're we have in mind for this magnificent formula. Yeah, so this is a little of everything. Um, because we have the hotfix, we were able to hit some of the, the most outlying targets. And uh, uh, we we have like a light nerf package. Um, we have a bunch of incremental uh, buffs that we think uh, you'll find interesting. We also have two new cards. And there's also going to be some, we also have some uh, pop champions updates, which might excite some of you. 
So it's a little bit of everything. Um, um, and, uh, I think that's basically it. Okay, people are super hype about the new cards. Brian, was there like what what was the idea behind throwing in these these new cards? Was that yeah? So we we had an opportunity um, because we actually had some extra art. Uh, so it was a it's a bit of a different experience when you're given art and kind of make the card to fit it. Um, but it's still pretty fun. Uh, and the target because it was such a sm it was like a small card drop. Uh, we wanted these cards to be impactful, so we aimed for stuff that. Um, uh, should either like fit in a few more decks than just like one or two, or you could maybe build a whole like deck plan around. So okay, uh, that's exciting. Yeah. this is pretty cool. We're, we're hoping we hit it. Yeah, let's well let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and first let's talk about the nerfs. And this is the first nerf. Kling, do you want to give us a little more context about why we're taking away one power from Cat? Because she's too strong, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay. the... Basically, Kat, Kat's been like one of the top performing champs for a while. What did you say, Brian? Like, like for the last, uh... she's been the number one played champ for the last three months. So yeah, yeah, multiple, uh, very strong decks. Uh, uh, I mean, I love Katarina. But we we needed to to find out what the sort of looking for the heart of, of what the good experience is. So so here we kept the zero cost blades edge, like which would have been another path to nerf leaper power hit that, uh, and we kept her ability to be a rally on a stick. So we didn't adjust anything there. But we want to make it basically take take a little bit of the life pressure off. So that's the, that's the idea. We played with this a lot. Um, I'm confident she still uh, shows up in decks because she's very strong, but hopefully this will, will uh, take a little wind out of the, the sails. I, there was a video, um, Sunny just did, did a video kind of detailing oh, the yeah. the journey of Katarina from <laughs> Katarina's I, irrelevance to domination. So <laughs> when I saw that this was coming, I was like, oh gosh, I, I, wonder, how, I wonder how it's going to shake out once, once it's actually yeah. live. Same. I mean, it's a funny thing because we, I think this is one of the most worked on cards in the history of lore. We tried so many ways to to get her relevant originally, and none of them were really all that good. Some of them were stronger than her current form, in fact. Um, and so when we settled on the last one, we thought, well, okay, this is about the, this is all we can do. You know, this is, it, it turned out to be enough and more than enough. So, so yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, <laughs> I think, I think this next one is going to be, I'm Very so popular. I'm um, so excited. Let's just get into it. Okay, go ahead. This is uh, Quietus. Yeah. So uh, Quietus's change um, is closer to a, a bit of a rework. Uh, so instead of adjusting the power cap, you now uh, kills units with a total stats lower than the amount. Um, the intent of the card was never to just like, like it was always to kill cheap units and not to hate Galio and Braum and Alawi out of the meta. So um, this this gets it a lot closer to that design intent. Uh, so I'm really excited to see uh, what what happens to the meta after this. Oh my gosh. Reading chat. Chat is going I pretty quick. I saw it right starting now. to speed by. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we tested this at five. Five was almost occasionally too, too good. Yeah. Um, one thing you might not notice right away is if the unit has taken damage, it will fall. It will start maybe over the cap, but potentially fall under it. So there is some room for tactical play with it now. But overall, we think of this as a nerf uh, in general, and uh, kind of a lid taking the lid off certain other cards that were, it was holding down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it did feel really good in playtesting, though. Um, I could see this maybe being a pattern we revisit if we like it. There's um there's some Vagar mains who are very very happy about this. <laughs> yeah. I I think my favorite comment from chat is Bam Bam Bamvumi Bamjumi said well cooked. Well so cooked. well cooked you guys. Yeah. This All is right. we're only on the second change. Yeah, we're only on the second change. Let's let's keep it rolling. <laughs> okay, uh, Plink, do you want to walk us through what is changing about Kane's origin? Okay, so so basically, instead of three cultists, it's four cultists. So it's harder to bring Kane out of the deck. Um, uh, Kane was a kind of interesting card for design because we we knew he wouldn't 
hit as hard with only 10 cultists, but we could hit quite hard with 20. So it was kind of just waiting to become strong once we had the second Darken release. So, and, and you know, I, I think as everyone knows, three is just too easy. Kane's too automatic. Um, so uh, we're pulling back on that. Uh, the Beetlejuice joke just dates me probably, although I never <laughs> actually watched the movie. <laughs> I've seen Beetlejuice before. I've, I've definitely seen it. It's very good. It's very good. I don't remember it. I'm familiar <laughs> with the concept, though. That is fair. That is fair. Okay, let's let's get into the next one. Okay, okay, this one's really... In Do you want to explain this one, Brian? Yeah, so um, we, we tried several directions on Aatrox, uh, and they all kind of seemed to push a little too hard on him. Um, and so the change that we actually made is fixing a bug, which is that his... <laughs> His text always said three plus different Darken, but didn't actually count that. Um, and like, you'll be surprised at how much of a difference this makes. Um, it it comes up more than you expect that you haven't played different ones. It makes it forces you to kind of like make your deck a little more broad. Um, so uh, you know, we're we're still we're going to monitor Aatrox and make sure that this change is enough. But this seemed like the right incremental push um, for now. Yeah, one of the things. Okay, I, I really like that. I get to I get to talk to them pre-show and hear what what they're going to talk about. One of the things that was so cool was you guys mentioning how, like, uh, the goal isn't to get rid like completely demolish Aatrox and Kane. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's never to just like delete the top five champions. We want to kind of like massage it down to where things can compete with each other. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have more to say on that. I think nothing. I think that one of the exciting things for us as a team right now is because we we have a lot more opportunities to make changes. We can go for some slightly smaller changes, watch what happens, and then like adjust again. You know, because you know, we have a, a very heavy cadence coming up for for balance patch. So I think we don't. You know, it's never our goal to dictate to the players what they should be playing. And if we hit some of these things too hard, we'll just kick boot them completely from from the game which is not you know that's not ideal there are people who love playing this and you know they can kind of see by the player it so uh i think we want to bring it down um because it's probably a little too strong but we don't you know it, we don't want to kick it too hard. <laughs> there's some people in chat that are that are calling for for the death of the darken no. they, they've been traumatized by Aatrox. there's actually a really good question in here mm -hmm. um when we say different um is summoning aegis and summoning joral consider two different Darken, or is it the same because it's essentially just Joral inhabiting they, the Aegis? They're, they're considered the same card. In general, if a card has two different choices, we mm -hmm. always we still consider it the same card, and that's true for Zoe and other cards that'll count X different things. Okay, cool. So just to reiterate, if you summon both Aegis onto a champion or a character or unit and then Joral, it would only count as one Darken. For, okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, cool. Let's get on to the next one. All right, Plink, you want to talk about uh, the great, the great gospel of Naga <laughs> Um, So this is just a just a preview. We're actually buffing Alawi in this patch, so this was a really <laughs> hard choice to make. Like we're going to nerf a card that goes in. But the problem with like not just this card, but a lot of Alawi's cards is they were better. They're great in every deck, and this card is one. Certainly one of the most played and one of the strongest cards in our game. It shows up both in control, it shows up in aggro, it shows up in mid-range, it shows up everywhere because getting a unit at burst speed uh, and drawing two cards is was it's just a, a tasty package of it. So so we're trying to take away some of the burst blocking ability here while still leaving it intact for Alawi's own dreams, which is usually to have the tentacle when you're rolling out and attacking with Alawi. So so we try to kind of hit you not and, and also not destroy the card. So that's that's the dream here is kind of leave her dream intact while kind of taking away some of the excess use. And that's sort of the narrowing joke here, really, because I, I want we, we don't want this to be an every build water deck, basically. Yeah. We want to make it a little more tentacle specific. Yeah, in general, like burst speed blocking is a pattern that we try to avoid or at least cost appropriately. And I think like being attached to draw two just made this like uh, clearly over. So I really like this fix. 
Yeah, there's there's some people that are that are very worried for Alawi in chat, but I want to reassure you guys. Wait, wait until wait until we get to the end. It's coming, Alawi buffs. Yeah, that that way, then then you can tell us how you how you feel about all the changes. Yes, please let the slide deck complete. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about let's talk about Jinx. Do you want do you want to talk about Jinx? Ryan? Jinx, yes, Jinx just like rocketed up into the meta. Excuse the pun, but. Uh, yeah, this, um, I think I might have a little more context on here. Uh, the bit that was important to me is for the longest time I noticed that Nexus was lowercase. Uh, and so I made him <laughs> change it to uppercase when he <laughs> implemented this fix. Uh, and so that we're consistent across all of Runeterra. Uh, but no, yeah, taking, taking out uh, one of the Nexus damage will, uh, especially because she creates the rocket on level up now, um, it'll just give the, your opponent a little more time to kind of like uh, get their footing and possibly turn it around. It was literally unplayable when it was lowercase, but I'm, it, it was. I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that you fixed it. Plink, do you have anything to add about um, this this adjustment to, to Jinx? A, a, any more context or hopes um, and dreams? No, I think I think we we were a little worried when we made that fix to Jinx that she was going to be a little over. She was, I think, pretty clearly a little over. So this is like a lot a lot of times with this. I, I think. I feel safe with this fix mainly just because we kind of know Jinx is a little like a little too strong even for a champion. So even if like so this this is like a change for now, but it's also a change for in, in the future. You know, if we introduce more discard mechanics or anything like that, we'll she'll she'll uh, not just dominate. Uh, so that, that's the main thing. Cool, sounds good. All right, now with that we're on the topic of Jinx. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's tackle one of the other staples of Jinx's uh, favorite deck right now. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I, there were multiple like when Iceborne Legacy was a real terror. I remember <laughs> there have been multiple times where I've just like locked in on Porokin and been like, "This is the problem." <laughs> like <laughs> giving people two daring Poros for zero and a discard is it's just a little too much. Um, but I know that this change is particularly harsh. Uh, in, in practice as, as small as it looks. Uh, what do you think, David? Oh, uh, I mean, I think there's no card has escaped the nerf bat as many times as Poro Cannon. Yeah. I mean, it, it has been on the cutting block. Y'all just can't believe like how many times. It, and then when it's just, it has some defenders who I won't name. So that's part, of, <laughs> part, of, <laughs> part of what's going on. But also I think it does change it a lot and it is such a, you know, but I think it's time has come. I think, uh, uh, you know, we, we uh, elusive onslaught is maybe not everyone's favorite uh, uh, play against experience. So I think I think it's a, it's a good time. You, if you want your poros, you can pay one. You know, it's like eggs. Okay, this this has been a a uh, a hot topic. There's people that really really love it, and people <laughs> that are uh, are really heartbroken. So we'll we'll see how it how it pans out. Let's move on to buffs because people are really excited Yay. for buffs. As we promised, not a fake out slide. I promise. <laughs> okay, how how are we buffing Alawi? Do you want to you want to take this blink? Yeah, so the first is a pretty mild change, although she becomes a pretty pretty nice stat line for four, uh, especially given that her power grows when she attacks most of the time. Uh, as you'll notice, though, there's a kind of recurring theme <laughs> on these slides that, like, actually, like, the quietest derp is also a buff here. Um, but uh, I think we, we, we're pretty confident testing this, that this is a nice improvement and, you know, shouldn't be overbearing. So it's a small upgrade, a lot of small upgrades. Exactly. Yeah, it, I think in in particular, like anything that used to be in Quietus range that isn't, we we did kind of like play a little more conservatively with because if Quietus can no longer hate it out of the meta, then you know we just want to make sure we don't accidentally unleash a beast, basically. I, I think there's some Malawi mains out there that wouldn't mind if you unleash the beast. Let's go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, speaking of unleashing the beast, uh, this this Nagakaboros change, um, it just plays so much more nicely. It, it's, I would say, close to a quality of life because it is still an eight drop. Um, but it is so much nicer that if you have your tentacle up to 10 and you drop it, like, go ahead. You've, you've earned it at that point. Uh, very satisfying. I have a confession to make. Um, I played a bunch of, like, Bard Alawi when it was meta. 
And I actually didn't know that Nagakaboros was a card because I just started around them. And I never saw Nagakaboros in play. So when I saw this change, I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really cool card. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it'll see uh, a little more action. Yes. All right, cool. And then there's one more piece to the puzzle. Yeah, this is probably the biggest change, just putting Tentacle sm Smash back in the environment mode. Um, so, yeah, this is the biggest of the three changes. Hopefully, you know, we'll, because of the spawn two, it'll stay primarily an Alawi card. We don't care if it leaks out a little, but we don't want it to be like a mainline Bilge Water tool. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, but it, it definitely feels nice to, to Smash for three. All right, um, let's get into the Forge buffs. I know this has been, there's been a lot of talk, like people wanting to be able to, you know, cook up some some weapons with Orn. So let's see how he's getting adjusted. Yeah, I was I was seeing very specific calls for Orn buffs. So I, I was glad that we were sitting on some. Um, relatively simple, plus one, plus one. Uh, one of the really nice things about this is it means that as long as the equipment that you pick has one power, then in one swing he'll be he'll have eight power and be able to level himself himself up. So uh, it makes him easier to level up, get to the cool side of Orn two. Um, you have more context on this, Blink? Mm, this is a pretty mild change, uh, but uh, we you know uh, we think that it should uh, at least help. I mean, he was probably a little too small for a seven drop, so we wanted him to really have board impact when he hit. So that's the main the main uh, thing. Probably Forge, uh, you know, uh, Orn in his package will probably just keep sort of trying to massage up um, uh, as time goes on. Yeah, I also want to give a shout out to our 2022 world champion, Aragorn. And, uh, you know, I hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping to, to steal some of his Orn decks, see if this uh, lands in a good place in the meta, see, see if he plays it a little bit. Yeah, there's more forge buffs coming. So yeah, let's let's get to it. Uh, yeah, um, David, do you remember uh, more of? Because I remember Frank was talking about some of these changes. So so like basically, these cards were always under. I think pretty deeply under. You know, I, we were a little over cautious when we released Forge, um, uh, because it it had uh, you know such a you know when you're stacking the right equipment, it has such a chance to be a bit of a snowball. Uh, so we were very cautious, and I think overly cautious because these cards don't don't even feel all that great in a forge deck, much less anywhere else. So in some ways, part of the idea with this change is to give uh, Freljord some more, even some some tools that might play outside of forge some, but certainly to sort of lift up this whole package as a group. That's that, that's the idea. Yeah, make them more playable. Not not just tools, but um, like we we want to be comfortable with like Freljord having well statted units that. You know, regardless of the text on, on the board, they can also kind of like hold their own. Uh, so this is a, a move toward that. Awesome. Let's see the uh, the last forge buff. <laughs> this, this one's <laughs> probably my favorite one. Of all <laughs> <them>. <laughs> Wait, I didn't read. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no chat oh god oh god okay i, I can't look at chat um yeah so uh, to cover the change um so he was a a five cost five five and we've reduced his power by one and allowed him to forge twice uh which it just it feels better for a an equipment centric deck to play in the forge space and be able to to in increase the power of equipment as they should rather than um just play a beefy unit so yeah, yeah. I, it's more of a tool now i, I really like this, this plays really plays played really well and when we were testing it out i was really happy with this change hopefully hopefully we'll see some action nice 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 all right let's move on to some minor champion upgrades all right let's see who's first <laughs> okay malachi plink tell us about uh tell us about the great words of our tree, our tree lord Malachi. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a pretty small, a pretty small upgrade to Malachi. Uh, he does get out of quietest range, as I said, as a recurring theme. Um, he was in it without the buff. Well, no, he wasn't. He was in it against the five, the the, the quietest five. So, but but I, I think the idea is really just to let him enter combat at all in a meaningful way. Like one power, he really couldn't ever like 
take a take even like a one drop or like you know or a two drop out like yeah so this is really just to let him let him be a little more active uh, he's not going to obviously overwhelm your opponent with damage but it, it lets him enter combat a little bit more aggressively yeah it's it's just a more reasonable shape for him it also made um uh riot three greg very happy because he's a maokai <laughs> main <laughs> <laughs> oh man if just y'all haven't bonus. seen it Riot Greg, he did a, a really cool YouTube short, so check mm-hmm. out the YouTube channel, Shameless Plug. Um, all right, let's get to the next one. Oh, I'm, I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, this is just, uh, you know, Jax is the, the master fighter, weapon master of all weapons. He should be able to equip other weapons and, you know, not lose any sort of capability. So this is also close to a, it is basically just a quality of life change, but it is nice to be able to put whatever you want on Jax and have him kick ass with it. Yeah, imagine if he had a real weapon. Exactly. You can't. Imagine no longer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, Jax is the real weapon. I, I, I agree, Aziri, otherwise. <laughs> Jax is the real weapon. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's see the next change. This is actually the more exciting Jax change. And it's something that like a lot of people have been asking for, is to expand his slice, which, which was, I think felt to be too narrow. So... We fish fight and give Jack some native interaction, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, Rorokith is also another tool. So so both these cards getting weapon master is probably a bigger improvement than his L2 change. That was just a quality of life thing. This is this will substantially open up a little Jack's action, I think. People are so happy about this. Hey, this is one of the changes that universally everyone's really, really really on board with we actually got a really good question in the middle of uh-huh. this onslaught let me see i am so sorry i lost your name okay wait it's greasy butterfly so with the jacks change will mm-hmm. light of ikafia e- still have overwhelm as well yes yeah, yeah. so yeah. It, in effect if he has light of ikafia Aqu- on him it's a little bit redundant but this is, allows you to move light of ikafia onto something else and move uh, a different weapon onto him okay cool awesome Awesome, good to know. And then Tristana. All right, do you, do you want to talk about this, Brian? Yeah, um, this this change was interesting because Tristana has a fairly low play rate. Um, the but, lowest play rate. The lowest, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry for underselling for that. Um, but there is there is some power in her kit, uh, and it's it's not, uh, it, it's, it's so close to where we want it that um, we kind of want to, uh, just give her a little bit and see if the attention that ensues kind of like causes people to to create some new brews with her and, and really like pushes up her play rate to about the power level that we expect. Because sometimes the champ just needs some attention, actually. Mm-hmm. As the resident patch note writer, mm-hmm. I have noticed that there's been a lot of like small incremental like Vandal City buffs mm-hmm. happening over the past like half a year. Like, do you think those will really <laughs> play into? Do you think there's all of a sudden going to be? Do you think this change will kind of like push it into the spotlight? Or I, I I'm I'm a little scared of it being pushed into the spotlight because I think <laughs> it being in the spotlight was the reason we had to shove it out of the spotlight. <laughs> Fair. Um, so we kind of wanted to gently ease it into whatever a slightly smaller spotlight is maybe like in the wings of the stage like yeah not on yeah stage, you know but like supporting cast member bandle city okay not okay. star bandle city <laughs> um, the the problem is yordles are jerks julian That's <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like when, when you're immortal no one really wants them no one, you get pranked it's just like all kinds of negative stuff happens to you so, i actually so. i i want to pick your brain someone asked earlier in chat i will we'll move on soon but some people uh-huh. were curious, like, was there like a design decision to not have Weapon Master on these cards in the beginning? Was there like a, a fear of it being too powerful? Or like, could you give some context into maybe like why we're, we're making that change now? So it was really just a symmetry thing. You know, a lot of the, the Weapon Masters were a lot of these like cards that were split between two regions, you know, like, like, a, like a very small package. And if you notice, both these are just Demacia cards, actually. Mm-hmm. So what we didn't add another double typed card to this so so basically the original list was just kind of symmetry for doing a bunch of two region cards but i think that like we learned a lot about rune terrans over time and sort of what people wanted and so having like richer slices is like kind of definitely our goal going forward but we want to kind of keep pushing on some of the older ones till you know till till the their their uh card slice feels better and so this is this is what this is so yeah we lose the symmetry 
there's there's a balance of like wanting to give you a clear second region to go to with mm-hmm. your Runeterran champ, but also not wanting to gut the Runeterran champ itself so much that it feels like you have to go to that region mm-hmm. or else it's unplayable. Um, and so this pushes it back into the former where hopefully you get a, more, a little more flexibility and can uh, make some more interesting choices. Cool. Cool. Love to hear it. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, we had Justana, and then the next one is, <laughs> oh, Rise. <laughs> Oh man, Plink, do you, you want to talk about Rise? You want to talk about this change? Yeah, I, I, so, so let, let, we'll just be honest. The devs are scared of Rise. Everyone's scared of Rise. <laughs> 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 this, this change is not a, uh, and, and it's not partially because as when you add cards, like, you know, and we have, we have another expansion, you know, when, when uh, the expansion of Brian's Leading comes out, when you add cards, you, you're adding a lot of power to rise we know that there's some things coming for rise right so we're and you know getting comboed out is a little you know alternate win conditions can be a little nerve-wracking depending yeah. on how they play out we've seen this with animal trade and some other things you know or fiora when she was like uh, oppressive so so there's a lot of nerves but on the other hand we do know that rise needs some love uh this might be too much love but you all can decide. Um, uh, our, our John uh, Mormon, our sort of resident Rise uh, expert, he took Rise to Master, which is a heroic act in the previous form. Uh, I know he was a little concerned, yeah. but he might be like the best Rise player, so I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, so this is, I think this is like instead of going from two, it's three. It's it's you know at least when you when you can refill that much, uh, it's. Bigger than you might think. What's happening here? Um, hopefully, it's not too much. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. <laughs> we'll see. I think. I think this is going to be a really interesting one. Uh, this one is also very, very divisive or divisive in in chat. So we'll see. Let's let's continue the hype train. Let's see what else. Yeah. This. So. So this is a fairly simple change. It's. It's. Shadow Shift is one of those cards that. It just doesn't see any play. Um, and uh, But it does occasionally come up because Zed is quite a popular champ. So uh, this was a bit of a no-brainer. I think we locked this one really quickly. Um, it's an interesting card. So t- uh, at two cost, it feels satisfying to play and about the right power level for uh, the current meta. Cool. People are saying, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah sounds good. <laughs> that was our opinion. Sure, why not? Sometimes that's how buffs be. Yeah. Okay, let's let's move on. Okay, okay, this this one's interesting. <laughs> La, Lissandra, uh, Plink, do you want to talk about um, <laughs> about <laughs> about this? Um, I'll try to overcome my fear about buffing thralls, but yeah. Um, so the thralls change was needed. I think thralls was a little oppressive, um, but we, you know, we thought it kind of took a little bit too much away from Lissandra herself. So we, we tried to bring back some excitement for Lissandra within the Thralls package, even while we didn't, you know, rechange the the the, uh, the countdown back to eight or something like that. So so I think this is a way of Lissandra gets a nice discount for being the champion on the on the idea. So you feel very good playing her, but we're not trying to return Thralls to to prominence particularly. That's, that's the basic idea here. So we we have a question in chat, and I, I think I know the answer, but let, let's just clarify. Um, the Frozen Thrall that's advanced by two, is it just the Thrall that Lissandra summons, or is it all on board? Okay, It is just that single Thrall. Only that advanced. single Thrall. Okay, cool, cool, yes. cool. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. If, if her Thrall gets obliterated, Will she automatically advance another thrall, or will the obliteration just? If her thrall gets obliterated? Yes, like as it's summoned, obliterated. Oh, there wasn't enough room for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it the the advancement targets that specific thrall. So if that thrall gets obliterated, they, we won't get anything out of it. Okay, cool, cool. Yep, from the full board. All right, good to know. And ooh, oh, this is this is I'm happy about this. So I am an unabashed. Uh, so I really <laughs> like playing Bane. Viego and the third one is Master Yi. Nice. I am that person. So I'm excited to be able to play Master Yi more in lore. So Brian, do you want to talk about do you want to talk about Yi's adjustment a little bit? Yeah, so um, it, you're actually gonna see a, a similar change to this uh, later down the line, but um, 
sometimes these I've seen quests can make it uh, feel really frustrating to draw them late in the game. And especially with a cheaper champ like like he, that can like basically just kind of cost you the game. Um, so making any sort of attempt uh, at his quest and actually getting to keep that progress uh, just feels a lot better when the second Yi comes up, you know, uh, turn six, seven, eight. So um, yeah, this is more of a, it, it's definitely a buff, but it is, it is a, it's much more like satisfaction and like quality of life. Um, it just makes you feel a lot better to play. Awesome. That sound, sounds good to me. Um, oh man, this is just a, a random tidbit, but when I was first starting, it was very, <laughs> I forgot who it was that told me the difference between like the, the deck quests mm -hmm. and all the other quests. I'm trying to remember who I was playing. I think it might have been Jin, and I was very confused as a new player. I was like, wait, wait, who who is advancing on board? Who's advancing in deck? Um, but I'm personally excited for this. But yeah, anyway, let's move on. Plink, do you want to talk about Shivana? Yeah, so, so Shivana is, is uh, also going to a deck quest. So uh, I think, you know, this is the point's really the same as Brian's. Like, like drawing Shivana late and having to make sure that you got the right attack in before she leveled um, kind of weakened the card in a way that I think uh, reduced some of the satisfaction. So now if you if you draw Shivana late, but you've been attacking with dragons, so you're running a dragon deck, she's going to hit the board running and you'll be able to live that dream right away. And that's, that's basically the idea. You just pay that player off. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Her quest did go up. I don't think I noted that, but her. Oh, the other thing is, she gets she. You, we have a slight discount on scraping strike also when she plays it. So now it costs two when she generates it. So it's a little bit more playable. Yeah, yeah. People are are noting that. So I, I'm trying to remember how much more the the 16 is. When you were play testing this, did you generally see the level up happening like around the same time, or was it even a little bit sooner? Even if even with the adjustment to 16. Um, it just kind of it kind of depends. If you were leveling up using Shivana, it's going to be slower. But because uh, if you hit with any dragon, it'll be faster. You know, basically. So so it, it is probably on balance just slightly faster. But it's like it's, it's there will be games where it's slower. There's no question. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you, I think it was fourteen. At fourteen, she just she's like always leveled. <laughs> so we had to move it back a little. That was that's just a testing thing, really. So. I'm gonna actually shoot this over to you, Brian. Some people in chat are asking, like, what is a deck quest? Could you give like some other examples, or kind of just distill it to like explain to me, like, like on five terms? Yeah. So um, I think it's easiest to explain with the opposite, which is what we call an I've seen quest. Um, and so if a champion has to be on the board when you, when it, you're filling its conditional out. So uh, for example, with the old Shivana she had to be on board seeing the dragons hit. Um, and the shift to a deck, uh, deck quest means she no longer has to do that. So she can come down long after the dragons have hit and still know, oh, they've dealt uh, 16 damage, so. Cool, yeah, awesome. Uh, what's up next? We have champion discount bin. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, someone in chat was just saying, where are my kale buffs? So let's talk about it. <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> oh man! So Plink, how did we? This this feels. There's kind of like a lot of stuff happening here. What what were the what were the ideas behind behind this this change? So I normally don't read my comments, but this one's not even a joke. Like the difference between five and six mana is vast, really, for what you kind of need to get as a six mana champ and what you can get as a five mana champ. And um, I, honestly, maybe I'll let Brian talk about this. Kale was more more his baby than me. I mean, this this just plays well. But anyway, go, go, maybe this was yeah. your, your card. It, yeah, so. It's definitely a lot more effective. Uh, she, she really hits the ground running now. Um, but when I was in uh, working on Kale in development, one of her goals was to try to be an expensive like uh, game ender. Um, and I, I think releasing in the same set as like next to Aatrox and like uh, Aatrox and the Darken kind of fill that already. And so this actually freed up Kale to kind of like move around a little bit, um, become a little like more of a mid game champ. Uh, so yeah, we felt uh, pretty safe taking one cost off of her. Um, so we dropped her power by one uh, and her health by one. 
but we gave her the power back because when she's played, she now buffs herself. Um, and that's a quality of life change because there were instances where uh, maybe Kale was somehow the first card that you played um, and nothing, you hadn't attacked with any other buffed units. Kale couldn't buff herself. Um, and so this allows her to get her own kind of snowball rolling. Uh, so it's just a nice quality of life, quality of life change. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to to try it out. I have to admit, I haven't tried much kale. I was <laughs> I was one of the degenerates on ladder spamming Kane Aatrox. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so hopefully I can try out kale now. Yeah, she also dodged Squietus. It's great. Yeah, and then we have one more. Oh, you two were talking about this one quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, this one is very interesting. I, my my last memory of it is, um, I think Riot Vris just like completely blew me out turn three with it. Um, this, is an, this is an interesting change. Uh, Lucian was kind of like, he had really fallen off in terms of play rate. Um, so this should, like, it's not a complete buff because we dropped his stats as well, but it should kind of like bring the light back to him again. Uh, we're, we're excited to see what happens. <laughs> uh, I want to know, what does chat look like? I'm yeah, I know, curious. I'm worried. Um, pe laughing. People are screaming, WTF, stop cooking, what? Some people are just <laughs> spamming letters. People are saying, Lucian is here, Too Lucian Kennan, oh, no. Lucian Senna. No, 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 Quiet is question mark, question mark. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, people are saying insane, Riven. Yeah, this is, this definitely made, made chat, uh, <laughs> people said overcooked. This is, overcooked. I think this was the last for a reason, yeah. you know? <laughs> a very spicy cave. Uh, oh, we're, man. We're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep our eye on it, for sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll see. He's in quietest range now, it's fine. People are saying this is insane, but I kind of love, love to read that, you know? Yeah. So people are saying scariest change. Uh, to reiterate what, what David was saying earlier, we, we do feel more comfortable pushing some of these changes that scare us a little bit because we know we are able to revisit the game uh, and the balance more often uh, this year. So uh, yeah, excited to see what y'all cook with this. Yeah. All right, next. Um... <laughs> uh, here are some of our random buffs. All right. All right, Plink. I... Once again, having Ooh. written patch notes, the hate hate spike has been we've we've been rubber banding on it. Where, where did we land this time? It just got more damage. I think like it was obviously too strong at one for what it was doing. Um, at two, it sort of underperformed. We could have put this as an as an Avalon buff, but really we're looking for trying to get a really nice whole package together for Avalon before we roll that out, and we have tried. So we're still, that's still in the shop, um, but so it's not, this is, it's an Evelyn buff if you want it to be, but it's really just a, a, a nice interaction tool for SI. Um, uh, it, it improves the card to, I think, a, a more playable state, basically. It was, I, don't, I think, a little under um, um, at two damage. Yeah. Yeah, people people seem pretty happy for this. Um, some people are big Evelyn fans in, in chat. Uh, but we'll we'll gloss over that and this one weight of judgment yeah so these kind of cards um where they have two different options uh but the same cost are, are always a little difficult to to land correctly because that cost is has to be shared between the two effects and i think weight of judgment was an example of like kind of a failure of that because I, I i wish you could get the stats on it but i don't who was paying four mana to deal two to a champion at slow speed um so hopefully this kind of change brings both of the options closer to reasonable. Um, it's still like expensive for the champion side, but you you might find yourself like occasionally picking it this time, uh, as opposed to never picking it before. Mm -hmm. There's uh, this one is probably the, the least popular change in in, in chat so far. Wow. Um, some people are worried about uh, maybe like path of champions implications in mm. in like Nasus's. Um, but yeah, it's. I think this is definitely something uh, that we can we can keep an eye on. P people are wondering, like, is it far enough? So, so yeah, I, I mean, looking at this myself, I I'm not sure. The, these cards are difficult to mm -hmm. to kind of land the target on. Um, I do think this is closer though. 
I think four damage is like a sweet spot for certain types of removal. Like so, so that's sort of basically yeah. So that's that that's our reasoning. But you know, we can always touch it again mm -hmm. um, if needed. Mm -hmm. Someone is asking if I was looking at chat, and yes, yes. Uh, I think your name was Tanuk. Tanuk. I I'm not sure. It's going uh, Tanuk four. We're looking at chat. I can see you. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Dragon Caller, one less cost. Yeah, um, we so we were trying a few things with this one, uh, and we actually tried um, not round start flow, so you could get the Empyrean immediately. Uh, and that was very nutty. Uh, so this uh, feels a lot more reasonable for, for what it is. Um, uh, hopefully uh, lets him live his dream a, a, a little more often. Because um, I, I, I think I personally designed this card, so I would love for it to, to get a little, uh, just get a little more visibility. A lot of people are saying this is crazy. They're, they're, they're right. having the, the opposite reaction to the Dasus. They're like, oh no, this might be really, really good. <laughs> I, it was They're way scared. too good when it was immediate. It's still <laughs> on round start, so your opponent will get a chance to respond. So uh, it feels fairly fair. Cool. Let's let's see where it lands. All right. Let's see the last one. Yeah, this one's this one kind of came out of nowhere. I think uh, David has more context on this one. Oh, um, I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure who suggested it, but he basically all the. He made some early J stacks, but never was um, uh, like in any of the recent builds. Hasn't played that much of a role despite pulling Jace. So we kind of just wanted to put it like you know, give that deck another tool, uh, like make it so it's a little bit better to play him. So he just has a little bit more um, damage now. Uh, we increase the base. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that, that that's really it. It's in some ways it's it's uh, sort of similar to the uh, Nagakaboros change. Where we wanted to, you know, these cards are supposed to be sort of high-end finishers that when you play them, you're excited and they have really good utility, uh, you know, because you had to include them in the deck and, you know, risk all the variation of having a really expensive card in your hand. So, uh, so putting it, you know, giving this, you know, making this worth seven, basically, is what we're, we're after. Yeah. Heck yeah. We are all here for it. And last but not least... We have the new cards. I'm sure. I, I wonder if people have been. Were people theorizing what, what the new cards could be? Let's see. Oh, Let's I'd see. love to see those guesses. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I'm curious if they can guess what. Here. Let's see if they can guess the region. Do you guys want to try to guess a region? I actually don't remember the region. This makes me want to do like a slow reveal. A like slow reveal? <laughs> just like slowly <laughs> hand down. One pixel at a time. Show them the cost and the region and then the art. All right, let's, That'd be fun. let's get into it. Okay, oh, Shadow Isles. Okay. So, yeah, who, who, wants to, who wants to talk about this? Yeah, Soul Cleave. So, um, yeah, we had, we had this piece of art and uh, I kind of had the goal of like, can we turn this into something that you might want, like something that'll generate some deck building ideas? Um, and uh, we messed around with a few options, and and this is the one that just had like such interesting utility uh, to go alongside it. It's at at slow, it's still very interactable, but um, there's there's a lot of options you can do with it. It's not restricted to followers, so you can get two ephemeral copies of a champion. Um, playing out on a shark chariot is particularly brutal, uh, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and probably a bunch of stuff that I haven't thought of before. So I'm really excited to see what people do with it. I think that's one of the most exciting things with like pushing these changes out there is like in 24 hours, yeah. seeing the crazy <laughs> decks that people yeah. cook up and you're like, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh, man. That one's for builders right there. <laughs> that one's for deck builders for sure. Cool. Let's, let's get into the last one. All so, right. Take it away, this is, a pretty, this is a pretty crazy card. Um, I don't, I think this is more of an environment check than necessarily like something that's going to make a ton of decks, although it is a little pretty with Nasus, just to let you know. But um, uh, so this is, we wanted to just add some tools to the environment in case certain uh, type of archetypes, especially championless archetypes, were uh, were oppressive. So this is, this is that. Uh, uh, I think this is also one where 
I mean, that piece of art is just so cool. Uh, and so we had tried a few options that were maybe like, you know, buffs or, or in that area, but like really this thing, this thing demanded something grand. Uh, so I'm really glad it ended up as like a, a pretty expensive spell that, that really captures the board. Yeah, it looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay, cool. So that is the bulk of our changes. Then we have yeah. something new this time that we haven't really done in <clears throat> in a previous patch. And I know that Brian really took took the lead of doing some Path of Champion changes. And I'm sure people are interested about this. So let's just dive right into it. Yeah. So um, we just, like found an opportunity to do this alongside the uh, PVP card changes. Um, and so I kind of like surveyed around a few changes and uh, we picked the most exciting ones and moved forward with it. Um, so particularly I wanted to hit some of the rare, uh, the relics that like a lot of people have collected maybe from event passes and they just like didn't quite hit that excitement bar. Um, so revisiting Hymn of Valor and having its redoubled Valor be halved in cost uh, it was a joke I made a lot, but um, <laughs> yeah, it just, it feels a lot better uh, to, to cast it when it comes up. Um, and the same with Guardian Angel, it used to only give that plus one revive, so giving it some actual text uh, feels a lot better when you put it on a champion. Um, and then we added a new relic, uh, so uh, yeah, this one uh, gained a lot of excitement when, when I was circulating the, the sheet of options, and uh, yeah, it, it takes a little bit to get to six mana gems, but once you do, oh boy. It just is print and spells. So that's a really fun one. I see um, a bunch of people asking uh, to fix Nasus. So it's coming. Yes. Great news, everybody. The very next patch, um, Nasus level three will be, it's, it's going to be fixed. It's, it's going to be in the next patch. So, so keep your eyes out. Um, it is coming. Yes. Yes, it is. It is fixed. Next patch, it will be here. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other buffs we have cooking. Yeah, so um, we also visited some of the items in the powers. Uh, these these were nice because they were like particularly simple for us to change. Um, so Spirit Stone dropping in rarity. Uh, sometimes we adjust the rarity because we want to make sure that the rarity that it appears at makes it an interesting choice next to other um, other items. So Spirit Stone dropping down to rare feels more appropriate, as as well as there, there's a little context I have to go into here, but um, when you visit an item shop or an item node, uh, you'll be offered these items, uh, but they'll follow certain internal restrictions for what they'll be offered for. So if you have an item that says like plus one power, it won't go, it won't be shown when you're uh, on an immobile unit because that wouldn't make any sense. Right. Um, so Spirit Stone used to be restricted to six uh, it wouldn't show for anything that costs six or more, which mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, you could play a five cost unit, get a fleeting one in hand and play another one. But getting to 10 mana is just such a rare occasion. So we, we changed its restriction to move it to something that just, e even if that was technically possible, this pulls it into uh, something that's happens more often. Uh, mm. And so we, we just wanted Spirit Stone to be more usable. Um, similar thing with standard star chart. Uh, it just didn't really feel like an epic. So bring it down to common makes it a, a more interesting choice next to other commons. Radiant plate armor, uh, it was a little hard to stomach plus two cost when it was offered to you. Um, so we dropped the buff very slightly, but dropping the cost to just plus one more makes it an option that I think people will consider a lot more often. Cool. Um, and another rarity change with reset. Um, shuffling stuff into your deck, uh, it's hard to feel the power of that, especially if you like die before you see them or you win even if you just win before you see them um so shuffling stuff into your deck doesn't feel super powerful and so it feels better to have that kind of effect at common yeah cool let's let's keep going i'm trying to keep an eye if there's any uh questions about the changes so if you guys have any questions in chat feel free to drop them and i'll try to ask brian yeah, so uh, nerfs, um, you might think it's a little strange to do nerfs to a single player, you know, roguelike mode. But uh, in particular, like with Path of Champs and also just like with the PvP game, we want to make sure that you're able to make interesting choices between several options. And Stalker's Blade was a relic that was near ubiquitous. Like it was so easy to slap on any champion that was 
just like big. Um, and this change is a shift that makes it, so you have to think a little bit more about who it's going on. It's still going to see play on, on certain champions. We obviously don't want to just kill the relic completely, but hopefully you might consider some different relics for the champs that you're playing with. Um, and with the, the sticker changes, these are very slight, but stacking stats on small units is a very effective strategy, but it's not a very interesting strategy to do repeatedly. Uh, so we, uh, those items used to be available no matter what the unit cost was, and we moved it so that it won't appear for units that are one or uh, zero or one cost. Um, just so the options that are offered for those just have a little more texture to them. Um, you might be you might utilize those cheaper units in a different way. Uh, so we're trying to add more interesting choice to the game. Yeah, some people are asking, you know, kind of as you uh, like progress or level up, some of the base deck will have some like base items on them. Will this still appear in like, will these items still appear on base deck? Yes. Units? So um, none of the base decks are changed. This is purely when an item is offered to you randomly in a shop or at an item mode. Cool. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, people people are asking a lot of other like high level Path of Champions questions. There's there's some stuff coming out for, for Path of Champions, but I don't I don't think we're we're ready to, to talk about it yet. But no, not quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, this isn't the end of the path stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely not the end of the path stuff. Um, in fact, this opportunity came from us kind of like seeing what it would be like to turn more attention towards it, whether this was something that you like to see in a variety patch. So absolutely give us feedback on whether this is interesting to you, whether we should, you know, dedicate a little bit of each variety patch or each occasional variety patch to path stuff. Are you, how do you feel about buffs? How do you feel about nerfs? Um, uh, all that feedback is useful. So please, please let uh, any of us know. Um, yeah, okay, so, uh, last slide, the new items. Um, these hopefully speak for themselves, but uh, I'm particularly excited for, for Poro Fluffed. Uh, I think there's a bunch of huge units out there that'll be really fun to drop them down to one cost one ones. Um, and I especially love that they're still Poros so they can get puff, buffed by Poro Snacks, uh, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Norris T uh, is, um, like I, uh, we, we took those stat buffing items out of the pool for units, but it still feels really good to get like a Norris T on them instead. Uh, so uh, those two, I think, feel particularly good. And then just seeing more of the Emperor's deck is great. Like, <laughs> those are some bonkers cards. Uh, I definitely the, uh, hope to see some clips with that one. It's really crazy. Like, chat, like, a lot of, we have a lot of Poros watching. Oh like yeah! Saying, oh wow! I am yeah, a poro. look at that. <laughs> yeah, like I, I didn't realize that we had such a big poro audience. That's pretty exciting. It's great to see the poros come out in droves. They were just looking for representation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there will be um, new champs for for Path of Champions, not in this four point one patch, but they'll come with the the next expansion. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes out for the next expansion. Um, okay, cool. Wow, I we got through all of the changes. Let me go ahead and go back to the open, the first page. Um, I do want to give you guys an update. So I'm not sure if all of you have seen the new videos or like the 2023 uh, article that we put out, but this is a live balance patch. Like we plan on having patches monthly and the next patch that will be coming is going to be a variety patch. And the variety patch is going to have um, roughly like a, a handful of cards. Do we, do we have like a, a ballpark of like how many-ish cards we're going to have in the variety? Uh, I don't know that we have a ballpark yet, but I know um, Greg confirmed on Twitter that it's going to be larger than just, like, the two or three cards that we've done in the past. Yeah. It, it will be, like, uh, a, a s substantial enough set of cards that it feels like it might change the texture. Right, but, like, not a whole expansion. Right? Not a whole expansion. Cool. No, don't, don't, don't think of it as a whole expansion. But, cool. Um, yeah. And then as well, there will also be live balances with those as well, right? But it's going to be, like, really targeted live balances. Like, is the idea that those cards are going to shake up the meta and then we'll have some balancing to, to pull levers? Like, it won't be as substantial as this balance patch, right? Uh, that, or, I mean, it's going to depend on no, the situation. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it'll be mostly an adjustment. Yeah. Like, more of an adjustment. We're just going to watch what happens here and make some, make some calls. And we sometimes we'll have some things that we weren't able to test well enough 
before we release this patch that are kind of in the wings that we kind of want to get in. And so, so we kind of keep testing those and, and as they reach fruition, then we like, then we like, we'll, we'll add them in when we can. So yeah. There's just stuff like that. Like, yeah. Cool. I, Evelyn's a really great example of that where we, we worked with her a lot and couldn't find something that we felt we could ship in time mm -hmm. and just kind of like pushed it along to the next patch while keeping the hate spike change because that one we felt pretty comfortable about. So cool. um, some people are asking when the patch goes live. So the 4.1 balance patch will be live on Wednesday. I believe it's it's going to ship. I right? I, 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 oh, God, please, <laughs> I please, you, please but... don't bury me. I, I, I believe it, it'll be live on Wednesday. <laughs> Please don't come after me if something happens. The patch will be there soon. <laughs> soon, TM. The, the patch will be here soon, TM. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I want to actually open it up. It is, uh, we will be closing up here in about like five minutes, but I do want this to be an opportunity to talk to you guys. Go ahead and throw some questions in the chat. There's a lot of you, so I might not be able to see you all, but I do want to see if there's any questions that you guys have that we can answer. Um, Oh, this is this is kind of a fun one. While I dig for a little bit more like meat and potatoes, um, between you two, like, can you just talk about which change you're personally most excited to like get your hands on and try on live servers? Oh, I'm biased, but I uh, can't wait to sink my teeth into that kale change. It's uh, that one's gonna be a fun one. Cool. What about you, Plink? Oh, that's it's probably probably Lucian. <laughs> it's either Lucian or 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 the the Soul Cleave, the the Ephemeral deck. I like I like low to the ground stuff, so those are both really really fun. Uh, uh, I Soul Cleave's really uh, was uh, really fun to build decks with, at least for me. So I'm pretty excited to roll some games. So. Yeah, I think Soul Cleave's my number two as well. I'm really excited for Kale as well. But I have a really good question here mm -hmm. from Raf Terra. Um, what are your thoughts on like Hollowed right now in Opulent Foyer? 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 Foyer. Foyer. Uh, I think Plink's going to know more about that one as our... <laughs> so, one okay, so it's good that you ask. Um, we we wanted to spin this change down on Quietus and, and uh, Katarina first and see where that lands us. But there is likely to be hollow changes coming soon. Um, exactly what the best aim, you know, best thing to aim at there is, uh, is not perfectly clear. Certainly Foyer is on our radar. Uh, as one of the main uh, main things to hit, but there's like other options, and there's like, you know, we 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 have certainly gone through a lot of looking at at Gwen and Gwen and company, and 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 there will definitely our our suspicion is we'll need to move it because it's just a little bit too strong and flexible right now. Um, we'll almost certainly need to move it before rotation, just because we don't want that to just enter uh, a rotation in in a kind of dominant fashion. So. Uh, I, I would I would anticipate that those changes are are coming, um, but we wanted it because we can change so often now, or we, that's our it's built in the structure of our revising. We want to see what happens with, when cats move down, when quietus has moved down. Uh, but but I, you're 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 likely right. Hallowed is probably coming um, uh, in some form or other once we get a better read on exactly where she sits. Okay, cool. Um, Clown for hiring asks when is rotation? So rotation is going to come with our first expansion. Um, I mentioned earlier, we're on this kind of like monthly cadence now. So this is the live balance patch and then next month will be variety and then the next month will be the expansion. So if you can math that out in your heads, you, you can kind of roughly understand when, when rotation will come. Um, uh, choo -choo -choo. There was another, uh, when and where can I see patch notes? So patch notes are actually gonna go live tomorrow. So we wanted this to be a special little time for us to come together with you guys at the community, get to talk to you and give you a little sneak peek. And then uh, the full patch notes are gonna be published in all languages uh, tomorrow. And check those out on our official website. That's playrunterra.com. Um, when Kane levels and is played, or if he chooses Ras, does that count as a unique dark infer? Aatrox's origin. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it would because it's using base cane. It, it would count base cane's card code. So yes, that should work. Cool. I haven't tested that specifically, but I believe that will count. Do we think it'll be separate from from base cane, and or, or is it coded as like one singular? So it's uh, cane is a choice card, so it all yeah. comes oh, okay. down to cane 
like singular, I, but because that one is Darkin, it's an interesting situation. Yeah, yeah. These, these are really good questions. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, ch -ch -ch. Let me look through and find one more question before we close it out. Um, <laughs> oh man, there's so many thoughts. There's so many people questioning about opulent foyer. Let me find one more. <laughs> Any new emotes? New emotes will come with the expansion. Um, ch -ch -ch. Last. Ch -ch -ch. Oh my god! <laughs> when are we getting another event? I believe we should have an event with the expansion. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. Well, if you guys have any more questions, um, I personally frequent um, Reddit quite a lot. I have a little flair. You can always reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, my handle is JulesJP. Um, Plink's is Plink underscore Uncharted. And Brian's is... B. Coplick. B. Coplick. <laughs> Letter B, then my last name. Yes. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of questions that you guys have, but we are going to go ahead and wrap it up today. Um, seriously, send us questions. We'll try to answer as much as we can. You guys are awesome, and I'm glad that we have so many Poros in chat. Yeah. <laughs> this was so fun. It was so fun yeah. seeing chat scroll by. You, you're all seriously lovely. I, yes. I love this community so much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's for real. We, we, we're really grateful. You know, a lot of times game devs fear their communities we just we just love y'all it's it's thanks for all the support we really noticed so we really and really appreciate it mm -hmm. all right <laughs> thank you guys so much we're gonna send it off let me see if any of my legends of runeterra people are around to raid so say sit tight so i can send you guys off um while i'm actually finding someone to raid because we want to spread the love um, what was, uh, what was your favorite champion out of the last expansion between, uh, with Rise, Kale, and, and Aatrox? I mean, again, I'm biased. So <laughs> Kale, Kale was the first champion that I, like, really got to, 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 like, change the numbers on and, and, like, actually do some design work on. So, uh, I'm, I'm still, I, every time I see her pop up in Path of Champs, it's like an instant slam, uh, and I've already brewed a couple. I brewed so many decks with there, so yeah, it, Kale easily. What about you, David? Oh, um, probably Rise. <laughs> really? I just yeah. Well, so I play I play a lot of Cultists because I I worked a lot on that package, so I'm like really comfortable playing that deck. But Rise is like the most um, uh, novel. Yeah. Like, and I like I like the I, I like thinking out the the combo, the combo space, you know? So that place is, that's always good for me. All right. I enjoy play pattern. Yeah. All right, guys, I have it queued up. We are gonna go ahead and raid one of our uh, spawner creators. Shout out to Simple oh, awesome. Mouth, you're super awesome. And please enjoy the stream. All right, in five, four, three, two. Hi, Katie. One. <laughs> <laughs>